Alrighty guys, welcome to part 8. So uh, in the last video we just did creating, finishing creating all of the financial feature functions. In this video we're actually going to create the feature space. Um, so we're going to go ahead and run through all of those feature functions that we created and populate a, a data frame full of feature data for machine learning, which we'll do in a, in a couple videos from now. All right, so getting started, uh, just a recap, we created all of these feature functions. And if you remember, I created each function so that it could take a list of, of um, periods as an input. So if you see this durations column, or duration column here and here, this is the key that we're going to pass for each, um, for each feature function. So this is the list of keys that we're going to do for each one. And you'll notice that for like the MACD, where is it? All right, here we have 15 and 30, but two MACD uh, duration keys is only going to create one column of feature data. So there are a couple special um, special cases, but I'll show you guys how I handle that. So let's get right into it. The first thing that you should go ahead and do is create a new file, a new Py file, and um, this one is I call it feature collector because what we're going to go do is go through each through each feature and populate a new data frame full of all the features. And real quick before I get started, I'm in, in the folder here uh, that I've been working in. This is like the root directory, and I'm just going to create a directory called data. I'm going to move our price data over into there, just because we're going to start to fill this file up with like a bunch of stuff and this will just make it a little easier. Alright, so first off, let's do our imports. Alright, so there are imports right there. You'll see I only did pandas, numpy, and um, the feature functions file, which is here. So we have access to all of those feature functions now inside this file. So the first thing I'm going to do after that is uh, get our data, and this is just standard loading that data that we just moved into the data uh, directory. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename all of the columns so that they all have names that will work in correspondence with how I built all the feature functions. Okay, so each of the feature functions will take data that is formatted like this. Okay, and then this line right here is just going to set the index of the data frame to be the, and we use pandas .to date time, so it's going to uh, change all of the data in the dot date column to data frame, or I mean to a date time index, and it's going to set that as the index there. And then we're going to go ahead and get rid of the date column, so to do that, I'm just going to go like this and delete date because we don't need two date columns and then I will do this prices data dot drop duplicates because we want to get rid of all the duplicate data um, be for the downtime in the market um, because that'll throw off our algorithm alright so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create all of those all of these keys, okay, and I'm going to create them as lists, lists of numbers um, as input to our functions. Alrighty, so you'll see that I've created a list that corresponds to each of the periods of data that we're uh, interested in. Um, so you'll notice a couple of them only have one, alright, and that's because, well, for Heikenashi, we actually don't need to input this, um, but we're going to use it later as a way of naming the column that we place this data in. So we're going to use all of these keys for two purposes. One, to get our data, and two, to name the columns accordingly. So if we name every column a specific way, that we can look at all the columns and know exactly what it's referring to. So now what I'll do is I'll create a list of these lists, all right, and we'll call that key list, or key list like that. Let's do that. 
and we're just going to create a list of all these keys. All right, so now we have a list of all these keys. And so after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get all the features. So calculate all of the features. And so what I'm going to do is I'll just show you the first one. Oh, let's do momentum dict. So they're usually all going to be stored in, in dictionaries. So I'm just going to call each of them uh, their name and then dict. Uh, and then I'm going to call the function here. Um, and we're going to throw prices in there because that's our, our our data after we drop the duplicates, which is what we want. And then the the according the key that goes with it. So this is the periods that we're going to do it for. And then what I'm going to do is just uh, I'm just going to print one so that when it's running, because it's going to take quite a while to calculate all these, so that I can see like where it is in the in the process if we get any errors we'll know where we are. So I'm just going to go through and do that for all the other ones now. Okay, you'll notice right here that for the bowling or function we actually take three inputs and that's uh, the prices, um, the key, the amount of periods we're doing it for, and then the number of deviations. Okay, so don't forget to put the deviations in there for the bowling or all right, and now for the Heikenashi. After the bullying, we're going to do Heikenashi. But for Heikenashi, you remember that first we need to resample our data. That's why we made that OHLC resampling function, OHC resample. So we made this function, and you'll notice here that we need to create a column called symbol, um, and that's just specific for the, the ability to resample the data. So that's what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new data frame specifically for the Heikenashi uh, input. So we're going to call it H, HKA prices. We're going to name it, uh, or we're going to do prices.copy to get a new copy of prices. And then we're going to do, we're going to create a new column uh, called sim, uh, symbol, right? And it doesn't matter what you name this. So you can just name it sim, or you can name it, you know, just name it whatever you want, doesn't matter. And then we'll say HKA is equal to OHLC resample, and then we'll do uh, HKA prices. And now the time period. So the time period, the time frame, needs to be in this format, 15 hours like that. Okay, and then we have the default column set to ask, so we won't mess with that. And so that is the end of, oh, that's, that's the data frame that we're going to pass into to get our uh, Heikenashi candles now. So we'll call it Heikendict is equal to um, Heikenashi and HKA are the prices we're going to pass in, and then the periods um, we'll do Heikenashi key. Okay, and print 10. So this, these three steps, or four steps here, is how we get the Heikenashi feature. Okay, so now we have, at this point in the, in the file, we have collected all of the dictionaries that will contain the data for the periods that we pass in for each function. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of these dictionaries, these resulting dictionaries. Because what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the list of dictionaries and the list of keys, and we're going to create the column names for our new data frame with all of the features. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll call this one, uh, let's say, create list of dictionaries. And we'll do dict list, dict list. <laughs> All right, momentum dict, and we're going to want to get the attribute um, according to, so each of these is going to output, um, is going to, these are going to be the results class that gets uh, sent back out of each function, so we're going to want to access the actual dictionary inside 
of each one of those, which we can do by this. And if you go through each function, you can see that um, that's how they're stored. So you see right here that open and close are dictionaries, and so they're stored dot open and dot close. So I'm going to get all of them uh, according to their corresponding dictionary name inside of the results class. All right, so that is our list of dictionaries. Right away, you'll see that some of them are different, like some of them are named close, um, but there's other ones that, like Bollinger is named bands, the Heikinashi candles is named candles, the price averages is average, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to explain all those, but you can look through the feature functions file to see why each of those is named as they are. And now I'm going to create a list of so-called base column names. So these are going to be the names of the features themselves, okay? So we're going to just call this column feature, I guess. And it's going to be the base name of each of these. So momentum, stochastic. Okay, so you'll one thing you'll notice is that for each of these lists, so the dict list, the key list, and the column feature list, all of them are in the same order. And that is very important, so make sure that you keep them in the same order. Otherwise, just it's going to be a waste. All right. So now that we have a list of base column names, we're going to go ahead and loop through all of them and populate what I like to call the master frame. So let's first create the master frame. Populate the master frame. So let's call it master frame. Okay, master faster. <laughs> master frame. So master frame. And we will do pandas.dataframe with the same index as prices.index. Okay, so this is going to be an empty data frame with the index of the same index of prices. From above, okay. All right. So now I'm just going to talk about what we're about to do. So first, we're going to loop through our uh, list of dictionaries, our features. So we're going to loop through this first, okay? So let's create an outer loop, loop where we do that. So for i in range zero through length of dict list, okay? All right, so now that we're in here, first I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a special case, and the special case is the MACD. So with the MACD, and right now we're creating the names of each column in the master frame. That's what this, the purpose of this loop is to do, and to populate the master frame according to each uh, feature. So what we need is to understand that for MACD, we are passing in two keys here, and the two keys are only going to create one, uh, one column of data, and that's very different from most of the other ones, where we each key is going to create a completely different set, maybe two or three columns of data for each key. But MACD, the two keys is only going to produce one column. So I'm going to address that with an if statement. So if column feature i is equal to MACD, then what we're going to do is we're going to create something called the column ID. The column ID is going to be the column feature i, okay, and that's one of these and it's a string value. And we're going to add, we're going to create a string from the key list, and now we're going to index the two keys according to the MACD. So we know from key list that MACD is one, two, or zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's the sixth element, and then we're going to access the zeroth and the first term of that sixth element in the list. So we access the sixth and then the zero, and then we're going to do the same thing for the other one, key list. 6, 0. Okay, so this is going to create, this is going to say MACD 
1530 is what it's going to say. Okay? And then we'll say master frame dot column ID or dot or index by column ID. So we're setting a new column in the master frame. And we'll name this or we'll populate it with dick list I. So that is what we're doing for MACD once we hit MACD, and that is the only special case. All right, guys, so I decided to cut the video here because it took much longer than expected to film all of it. So in the next video, I will go ahead and just pick up exactly where I left off and we'll finish up populating this feature space.